JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January 15th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It gained against NOC, CHF and the Euro in that order, while it underperformed the most versus GBP, SEC and the Canadian dollar. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the New Zealand dollar. The weakening of the Swiss franc and the strengthening of the Canadian dollar suggest that uh, markets traded in a uh, risk on manner. However, the relative strength of uh, the Japanese yen points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market appetite, we prefer to take a look at the performance of uh, the equities. Major EU, and, uh, major EU indices rose for the third uh, straight session, perhaps due to hopes of a large stimulus package in the US under Biden's presidency, as well as due to upbeat Chinese trade data, suggesting that the world's uh, second largest economy is performing relatively well at a time when COVID infections continue to spread fast around the globe. The, ex the exception was Italy's uh, food CMIB, which slid 0.47% after Premier Matteo Renzi withdrew his party from the ruling coalition, sinking the government on uh, disagreements over funding and raising the likelihood of early elections. In the US, all three of Wall Street's uh, main indices closed uh, in negative territory, with the negative sentiment rolling somewhat into the Asian session today. After cheering uh, the prospect of a large stimulus plan in the US by President-elect Biden, investors may have decided to lock some profits following a report that uh, Biden is expected to unveil a 1.9 trillion US dollars spending package. The fact that initial job jobless claims rose uh, by more than anticipated last week may have also hurt uh, market sentiment, as following the tumble in the NFPs for December, it suggests uh, that the labor market may have taken the down road again. It could also be that investors reduced their risk uh, exposure ahead of the earnings season set to start today with results from JP Morgan, Citigroup and Wells Fargo. As for our view, it has not changed despite the setback in stock markets. We believe that a 1.9 trillion US dollars spending package is large enough to provide support for the US economy. The retreat on the report may have just been a sell the news uh, market reaction. On top of that, the weakening labor market increases the chances for the Fed to take additional uh, easing steps in the months to come. Remember that the minutes from the latest FOMC gathering revealed that some members noted that they could consider further adjustments uh, to their QE purchases, such as increasing the pace of purchases or weighting them towards longer term maturities. Yes, other members said that uh, uh, other members said that once uh, progress towards their goals of uh, of uh, price stability uh, and uh, and of price stability and uh, full employment had been attained, and gradual tapering could begin. However, on Wednesday, several officials pushed back the idea of tapering, with Fed Chair Powell deliver delivering similar uh, remarks yesterday. Thus, we stick to our guns that the vaccinations, the US spending package, the monetary policy support around the globe, and the softer stance on global trade by Biden are a cocktail of developments that may keep the broader appetite supported in the first months of 2021. Now back to the currencies, the pound was the main gainer among the G10 currencies, reacting very little to the disappointing GDP and industrial production data for November. 
as we already know that on Monday bad numbers were not a surprise to us as uh, November is the period when uh, the UK went back into lockdown. With uh, the Brexit saga now taking the back seat and the Bank of England governor playing down the prospect of negative interest rates, the pound has the prospect to perform relatively well. Yes, the disappointing data may increase the chances for the bank uh, increasing the pace of its QE purchases, but this is something the bank already noted it stands ready to do so. Thus, as soon as this is priced in, if not already, the British pound has the potential to rebound again, at least against the safe havens like the US dollar and the Japanese yen, which we expect to stay underselling interest due to a supported overall market sentiment. We understand that talks between the EU and the UK are far from over, as there is still the issue of the UK's access to the of the UK's access to the EU's financial world. However, we will start worrying again as soon as headlines of the, on that front start entering the spotlight. Now, as for uh, the rest of uh, today's events, apart from the UK GDP and industrial production data, which are already out during the European morning, we also get Eurozone's trade balance for November. Um, uh, which, uh, for which uh, there is no forecast uh, available. From the US we get the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index for January, which is forecast to have risen to 6 from 4.9. The industrial production for December, which is expected to have grown 0.4% month over month, the same pace as in November, and the retail sales for December. Headline sales are forecast to have slid 0.2% month over month after falling 1.1% in November, while the core rate is anticipated to have risen to minus 0.1% month over month from minus 0.9%. The preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for January is also due to be released, and expectations are for a, fa for a fractional decline to 80 from 80.7. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at, uh, every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.